today we have a story about warthogs. It's called The Warthog's Tale, written by John Bush and Lindsay van Black. The Warthog's Tale. The Warthog's Tale is a wonderful wonder. When he runs, it stands up. When he stands, it goes under. But the warthog's tail was not always so. Have you heard what happened? Do you know? Do you know? It all began, as most things do, in the very beginning, when the world was new. The first three warthogs roamed wild and free with tails that stayed as down as could be. While the very first leopard with a hungry eye watched their every move from a tree nearby. Mummy and Daddy and Baby Oort had no idea they might soon be caught. Not the slightest clue, not a hint, not a hunch that high above leopard thought, here comes lunch. Grazing and munching, they started to stray towards the tree where the leopard lay, silently watching, eagerly waiting until those warthogs were ripe for the taking. Just as those warthogs strayed into that trap, a twig beneath leopard snapped with a crack. Looking up, Dad yelled, Run! Follow me! In the long grass we'll be harder to see. Off charged those warthogs with leopard behind, ravenous leopard with one thing in mind. Into the long grass they bolted at pace. Into the long grass Leopard gave chase. Gallop! cried Dad. For all you are worth, or we'll be the first and last warthogs on earth. Oh, look at those warthogs run for their life from that leopard. Do you think they're going to make it? Little Oort scampered, huffing and blowing, too scared to think about where he was going. He lost sight of Dad. He lost sight of Mom. Terrified, little Oort raced on and on. Look at him racing. At last his tired legs sank to the ground. As heaving and puffing he turned to look around. Thank goodness he gasped. That leopard is gone. But then he cried out, Where's Dad? Where's Mom? They must have been eaten, and now there's just me, the last little warthog that they'll ever be. Don't worry, Oort, said a voice from a branch. They're jolly good runners. There's an excellent chance that they're perfectly safe somewhere nearby. There, there, Oort. Don't cry. Don't cry. The voice was Bundebird, friend to all especially someone so lost and small. I'll take a look, he said. You wait here. I'll bet my feathers they're somewhere near. He'd no sooner gone when a new voice hissed. Oh, I say, what's this? What's this? Psst, young fellow, the python, python's voice whispered. Been running too hard? Your feet are all blistered? Poor little chap. Dear, dear me. Perhaps you should cool your feet in my tree. How? replied Oort. I can't climb at all. And if I could, I'm afraid I might fall. Well, I could lift you up just fine and you'll never fall from these coils of mine. They call me Crush. So nice to meet you. Then Bundu Bird screeched 
that creature will eat you. Ort leaped back, crying out with a snort. Gosh, is that so? He seemed a good sort. <gasps> the snake was about to eat little Ort. Lucky, Bundebird came along and warned him. He said, that creature will eat you. Any sign of my mum? Any trace of my dad? Not yet, said the bird, but I'll find them, lad. Then off Bundu flew in a different direction, on a further mission of bush inspection. Ought set off for a river close by. The frantic running had left his throat dry. At the river he studied the drinking spots and made for a safe one sheltered by rocks. Goodness, rasped Ort, I do need a drink. Then Bundebird screeched, Ort, stop and think. <gasps> What's in the water here? Oh dear, those rocks aren't rocks. Those rocks are crocs. They'll crunch you up and lick their chops. What's a croc? asked Ort, surprised. When will you learn? the bird replied. They're long, strong things with long, sharp teeth and not much room underneath. And a little water would taste very yummy in a long, strong crocodile's long, long tummy. Oh, any sign, asked Ort, of my mum and my dad? Not yet, said the bird, but I'll find them, lad. There's a water hole yonder, behind that hill, where you can safely drink your fill. I'll meet you there, Bundebird said, but first, one last search up ahead. At the waterhole's edge, Ort stooped to drink, too tired, too lost, too sad to think. The water mirrored his sad little face, then a big tear rippled it out of place. But when at last the ripples were done, he saw three faces where there had been one. Good gracious, cried Ort, how can this be? Three warthog faces! but just one of me. He looked to his left, he looked to his right. Mummy, Daddy, he squealed with delight. Bundebird, Bundebird, quick, come and see. It's Mummy and Daddy, and they've found me. Well, I'll be an art fark, Bundebird cried. What did I say? They're alive, they're alive. But if you warthogs won't want to last forever, when you're on the run, you must stay together. Why don't you do as we birds do and whistle to give each other a clue? So they ran around whistling, but their whistles ran out. Have you tried to whistle while you're charging about? I've got it, cried Ort. This will work without fail. A warthog is short, but we have a long tail. If we run with it up, I'm sure we'll discover we can follow each other, whatever the cover. It worked! Their tails stayed clearly in view, so they made it a thing they would always do, a habit that warthogs just never forget. And they say not one has got lost yet. For that wonderful tale will only drop when the warthog it's joined to come to a stop. And that is so true. When the warthogs run around, their tails are straight up in the air so that they can find each other, even when they're running through the long grass. And when a warthog stops, the tail drops. 
when the warthog it's joined to comes to a stop, that wonderful tail will drop. And that is the story of the warthog's tail. Wasn't that a clever story? How they warn each other and how they help each other to f keep in touch. Did you enjoy that? I thought it was a grand story. I hope you're going to join me for another story sometime soon. And in the meantime, remember to subscribe and ring the bell so that we can notify you when there's a new story out. Bye-bye, Serena. Bye-bye, everybody. Mwah.